Hey everyone, I'm Mario from Edmonton, Canada, and you're watching Trucker Josh and Diesel on TJV, best channel on YouTube. Hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Keep on trucking. Diesel Weasel The one, the only Diesel Weasel Hey's a weasel named Diesel I see your tail wagging over there Yeah, you like the attention You like it, you're trying to act all cool I get it, I get it <laughs> We need to get you a shirt That says Diesel the man, the myth, the legend. Right? Don't look so excited. It's a new day. It's very exciting. Look at this. We're here in, uh, where are we? New Liskard, Ontario. Quebec is like right over there. But we're in Ontario. And we're going to have a good day. We're going to have a... Oh. So thanks for tuning in there, you fine person, you. You just clicked on the best channel on YouTube. Hands down. At least that's what we're gonna say it is. And that's why you're gonna subscribe right now before the movie even goes on any further. Before the movie, it's actually a video, a movie something different. And that's why you're gonna subscribe right now before we go any further in the video. Because I know a lot of you who watch this, watch this quite regularly, but you haven't subscribed yet. I know, because YouTube tells me. YouTube's a rat, sorry. Ratted you out. I can tell who's watching my videos who aren't subscribed, so if you don't mind, I'll wait while you go and subscribe. That way you don't miss a video. I make a video almost every day. No. Done? Thank you. You can follow up by giving this video a like after you're done watching it if you liked it or give it a thumbs down if you thought it was terrible. Either way, share it with your friends to let them know what's going on with Trucker Josh. Let's get on the road. All right, let's get out of here. Let's get, let's go get it. Oh, wonderful. So I, I moved you guys over to a little bit more of a central position. The other mount was gonna fall off soon anyway, so what do you think? You like it? No? Too bad, that's where you are. <laughs> Let's get out of here, got the lights on. We did our prey trip. Everything's working wonderfully. I'm just gonna reset my data for my tripometer so I know how far we go today, how much fuel we burned. All right. Let's rock and roll. Hopefully we'll do more rolling than rocking. How do we get out So this is the Husky. We did find a spot here last night. Actually a pretty good spot. If you watched yesterday's video, someone pulled out just as we were looking for a spot. So it turned out really well for us. The load is still tied down tight behind us. And we're on our way to Oak Bluff, Manitoba, which is just west of Winnipeg, Manitoba. We have today and tomorrow to get there, and it's 1,642 kilometers. That's about 1,000 miles. So we shouldn't have any problems. I was telling you last night that these tires I bought for this truck, they are amazing in the snow. Amazing never have any problems and I just realized something where I positioned you guys there is not gonna work very well because that's right between the wipers you're always gonna have that dirty space right in front of the camera oh shoot I don't have to worry about it later that wasn't very smart well Making our way up. The day is actually pretty good. The road's not as messy as I thought it would be. I thought it'd be a lot more messy than this, but we're still going through a fair amount of washer fluid. We're 61 kilometers from, uh, about 40 miles or so from our next turn where we have to turn at, uh, I think it's called Cochrane, Ontario, right? 
that's where we start heading west across sort of central northern Ontario towards Manitoba. We're gonna pull in a Capus case in there for uh, fuel. The DEF pumps weren't working in North Bay. What's this guy doing? This guy's turning. Right on, you got. Oh, there's another guy in front of me right away. I thought I got rid of everyone in front of me now. Still using washer fluid. Okay. It's always nice to be at the front of the pack. But I always kind of run slower than everybody, so everyone sort of passes me anyway. That way, at least I'm not catching up to anybody. I run at about, uh, well, the speed limit's 90 through here. A lot of people go through here at 105 to 110 uh, kilometers an hour. But, uh, you know, as long as... I let them pass, they usually don't bother me. Some of them like to tailgate me. Like, that's going to make me go faster. I really don't care. You're 72 feet behind me. Go ahead and tailgate me. I mean, if you hit me, there's not gonna be any damage to my trailer. <laughs> You're gonna be stuck with a broken truck. But as soon as there's a passing lane, I usually slow down even more, make it easy for them to pass me. Which a lot of people don't do, and it sort of frustrates me. I've talked about this before, right? Many times. You know, if you know people wanna get past you and there's a passing lane, why not just slow down just a little bit, let them pass, you know, make it easy so they can get past you quickly, and then they'll be out of your hair, right? A lot of guys, they just maintain their speed, or even worse, they speed up when you try to pass them. But it's just the way some people work. I don't know, they see someone passing them and they see it as a challenge, or they look down and they're like, oh yeah, I'm going slow, I better speed up now that he's passing me. Wow, by that time it's too late, let him pass, man. Lose on the left is like a whole new forest growing. All oh, 80 trees. There's a forest fire here at one point. It's always sort of cool to roll through a place that had a big forest fire about a decade ago to see all the new growth. It's always such a nice thick forest coming up. Forest fires are good for nature. A lot of people think it's a terrible thing. No, it's a natural good thing. It helps the forest uh, stay healthy. It's just really bad for people who live in the forest, like me. So we try to stop it, but at, that, at the same time you gotta clean up and uh, make sure that the worst doesn't happen. Is this a new truck stop? If so. Yeah, I think it's a new truck stop. I don't remember that being there. Lots of truck parking. Well, would you look at that? Somebody's thinking about us truckers, how nice. That doesn't happen all the time. You know, in the United States, my own opinion here, as soon as Karen's done interrupting me, don't you have a manager to track down? Are you done? She has something more to say yet, I can just feel it. She's a Karen, they always have lots to say. Just wait. There'll be more. Wait, wait. Well, where's the turn lane here? This is the turn lane? Why's it gonna be yellow line? Oh, and that Nissan's gonna get right in my way. Of course it is. Of course it is. No, wait, I'm good. I'm good. All right. There we go. Continue on this road for 614 kilometers. Just make sure there was no stop sign in that last clip at the end. So this is where I would usually stop in Cochrane. It's this Petra Pass here. But there's not much parking here. So that new SO around the corner is... Well, that's convenient. Well, what are they protesting here? What are they protesting? You see those people there? What were they protesting? You see what they're protesting? Couldn't tell. I don't know whether to give them a thumbs up or just to ignore them. So I just ignored them. So yeah, we're gonna go down here to Capus Casing. About uh, an hour or two, what is it, down here? What I was gonna say before, that's right, before I forget. Uh, in my own opinion, the United States pays a lot more attention to their truckers. But that's not to say that they, they don't need more parking. You need a lot more parking down there, especially on the East Coast. There's always never enough parking for the truckers. But the trucking, the, the trucking industry down there much better setup. There's a lot more parking than there is in Canada. And the parking is all paved, nice 24-hour truck stops. Whereas up here, we're uh, we're getting there. 
Yeah, it's getting better every year. So it's still a little bit longer way to go. But both countries really need to step up their game to get truck parking because more and more trucks are on the road and uh, you know, we already don't have enough parking. But every year it just gets worse and worse. But in the US, the parking that is there is much better. They have much better facilities. Up here very often it's the gravel parking lot, you know, potholes all over the place. The, the truck stops sometimes are kind of run down, but that's changing, that's changing. Like I've said before, Pilot Flying J coming up into Canada and influencing the Canadian market has done huge things in, from what I can see. And has forced all these Canadian companies to really uh, pay attention and upgrade their facilities to match that of the Flying J. Because Pilot's coming up here with tons of money. They're coming up here with all that sweet, sweet American money, right? And the Canadian truck stops are looking at them like, oh dear. Nobody wants to stop here anymore, eh? They don't want to go over there. Well, it's true. We want to go to the nicer facility. We want to have a nice, clean, sanitary shower. We like to have a point system that can be used on both sides of the border. We like to have paved park parking lots, organized parking, good locations, good, reliable premium Wi-Fi. And since Pilot's been up here, you know, Petro Pass has really upped their game and renovated a lot of their parking and a lot of their truck stops. They're on par right now with Pilot Flying J. Husky is sold out to Esso, and they've upgraded a lot of their locations. They're pretty much on par right now, and it's done a lot of good things, you know? Bring in a lot of little competition and, you know, lifts everybody up. So this is what the highway's gonna look like all the way through to uh, Manitoba pretty much now. It's uh, That's why I take the, the Highway 11 up here. You're away from the lakes, you get less bad weather, and you have less hills. It's pretty much just flat lands like this. The only downside is it's a two lane, but I mean, I drive slower than most people, so I don't gotta worry about it being a two lane. It's the people behind me that I gotta worry about it being two. But, but don't worry, I, I give them opportunity to pass and I slow down to make it easy for them. I know what it's like being stuck behind somebody going a little slower than you want to go. Here we are, Kappa's casing. Sort of like the the top of north, the northern highway. You can almost make it to Winnipeg in one day from here. Not quite, but very close. We're going to keep going after this, though. We're definitely not stopping here for night. Just going to grab some fuel after this guy decides where he's going. Park there where you're not supposed to park. All right. I need to get off the road. That's okay. This parking lot is pretty messy. I was just talking before before about how flying your parking lots are so nice. They haven't paved this parking section off to the right yet, so it's all full of potholes. And I think this is dirt parking here too. So this is one of the flying jays that hasn't paved yet. I guess the whole thing, but it's. It's a little bit small, could be bigger, but I don't know what they pay in property taxes. It might be way too expensive to have more land, you know? All right, fuel, which fuel pump, which fuel pump? I need to get DEF too. I hope their DEF pumps are working, but I don't know, I'm looking at these other people and they're buying separate DEF containers already. I don't know. That probably means they're DEF. It's not working. Oh yeah, here's the sign. No DEF. No both DEF at the pumps. Oh, it's so frustrating about wintertime in Canada. You know, Petropass has no problem serving both DEF at the pumps all winter. Flying J, these pumps, they freeze. Is the camera picking up that whole structure moving over there? Look at that thing. It's like a massive crane, I guess, for loading train cars. The whole thing moves. We're in Hearst, Ontario at the Esso truck stop. Just stopping for a quick bathroom break. That coffee went right through me. This is the truck stop and it shall forever be known as the truck stop without coffee. Every time I've stopped here, they don't sell coffee. Once they had a coffee maker, but they didn't have any coffee made. So I always went across to this shell on the right here and bought coffee there. So it's not like you can't get coffee anywhere nearby. It's just 
I found it the strangest thing ever that they have a truck stop that doesn't sell coffee. I mean, what do truckers drink around here? Maybe I don't want to know what they do to stay awake. I thought everybody sold coffee. This guy coming past me has almost caused two head-on collisions already trying to get past. I hope that load is worth, worth your life, buddy. Man, he tried to make a blind pass around a right-hand corner. Continue on this road for 11 kilometers. I keep thinking... <laughs> This bridge is police when I come around the corner. I'm like, oh, there's a check stop. Okay, cool. Nope. Just a fancy bridge. We're in Nipigon. And uh, we're going to be stopping at the Petro Pass here for some DEF. Got a quarter tank left. And the DEF pumps work pumping in Kappa's casing because the Flying J pumps. That's my one criticism of Flying J. Their DEF pumps freeze in the mildest climate. Like, they're not designed for northern winters at all. They shouldn't be using those pumps up here. Petropass uses a proper pump. If they would look into how they do their DEF pumps, they could learn a lot of things about how to maintain it in the wintertime. It's like a separate pump, it's heated, and it never freezes up. So we're gonna go to the Petropass here, grab some DEF, and then go find a parking spot and shut down for the night. All right, it's coming up here. This place is usually just a gong show at all hours, so. Hopefully, it's uh, quarter after 10 at night now. Hopefully, hopefully, it's not too bad. It looks pretty full already. We're not going to be parking here. But, oh, and we got this guy coming out the entrance. Okay, that, that's why there's a big sign on this driveway that says enter, my friend. The other driveway on the other side has a big sign that says exit. But that's okay, I don't always listen to those signs either. That's okay. So you know, I'm gonna show everybody here so that, I'm, that you know I'm not lying. Right here on the left says enter. That says enter, right? Pretty sure that says enter. We will enter in the entrance. How about that? Okay, we need DEF. Does every pump have DEF? I'm not sure if they all do. Oh, this one does, yep. Okay, we're gonna go over here then. See on the left here, it's that big blue pump. It's a separate pump and uh, it works all winter, even in like minus 50. It's a wonderful thing. Wunderbar. <laughs> 